So again, this is the uh, the infill section. I had an extra nine inches or so between between the uh, the two cabinets. There was kind of not doing much, so I decided to build this little cabinet. It was a fun project, and I'm able to populate it with uh, some more hand planes as I began to accumulate more hand planes in my transition to. Uh, from uh, power machines to hand tools. I work, still work with power tools and machines, but not as much, and I'm getting away, so I'm more likely to pick up a hand plane now, either a bench plane or a joinery plane, instead of firing up a router, that sort of thing. So at the very top is, uh, when I began with uh, joinery planes, this was my very first one, it was, uh, so I cleaned it up a little and polished the metal. I used it, it's, it's a plow plane, so it has a depth adjuster, and it's, uh, unfortunately, it only came with a quarter inch iron, which, which is fine because that's, that's the iron I use the most, quarter inch for uh, drawer bottom grooves and that sort of thing, and uh, grooves for the backs of uh, casework. Uh, so the, the fences are uh, adjustable. Uh, it's, good to, it's a beautiful plane. It's probably 150 years old or more, 170 years old. But it's, uh, it's in very good shape. It hasn't hardly any cracks or anything. So I, I use that. I couldn't believe how uh, nice it was to use. And then uh, just below that I have, uh, this is the very first block plane I purchased uh, when I began with hand tools maybe uh, 17 or 18 years ago, or maybe 20 years ago. This is uh, it's a kind of, it's just a standard Stanley, low cost Stanley, but it works. I replaced the iron on it, or possibly not, but just sharpened it and uh, tuned it. And uh, from, you can distinguish the lower cost planes from higher end planes from the, uh, you can tell them the machining is not quite there, it's uh, still has quite a bit of grooves, I mean it hasn't been lapped or anything, you can almost feel that. So there's a lot of work to bring this up to a level of a, of a more expensive plane, but sometimes it's just more economical just to just buy an expensive plane and spend all that time. So I left it as is, it's flat, it's reasonably flat, it's reasonably flat, so, so it's, a, it's a user plane, it's good. And this is a uh, Nielsen skew block plane I use, uh, I use quite a bit. So it has a, this part removes and I can use it as a, to create rabbits along edges of boards. It has a fence. Uh, I've, added, I've added the wood part and, uh, and it works really well. It's skewed so it glides along a lot better than uh, a straight one. So that's, uh, this is one of my later additions. It's a, uh, it's a router plane. And it's preset now with a quarter inch uh, iron and uh, because I was doing some uh, some uh, case work recently and I had some stop grooves to make so rather than firing up a router and a router table I worked out a process to do this using uh, a chisel uh, the router plane and uh, I've also got a fence on it I really haven't had the opportunity to use a fence much yet but but I'm very impressed with how these work and how they're able to hog off work in a, in a groove and a dado, I should say. It's very, very impressive. And once once you've uh, developed a process and a technique, it's very fast to do. So it's almost not even worthwhile to set up a router in a router table. Uh, this is my uh, go-to plot plane now. It's uh, it's a Vertas, and the Vertas is one of the few companies that even make metal uh, body router. Uh, sorry, uh, joinery planes. This is uh, plot planes. I've added the wood fence. Preset with a quarter inch iron. They use for both uh, inletting, inletting backs into casework and uh, for mostly for drawer bottoms. And a couple of uh, moving along, a couple of small antique marking gauges. This is a uh, this is just a beautiful uh, marking gauge. It's uh, it's antique and uh, has both brass and wood, and it's probably rosewood. I mean, they work just as well today as they work back then. They're so simple. And this is a more interesting one. It's a little more uh, decorative uh, with the fancy brass work. And it has two pins. So if you're marking uh, mortises, this will come in handy. So you can preset it for both pins and then uh, mark along. So I'll move, the, uh, I'll move the camera over and I'll talk about this. This cabinet is identical to the other cabinet. The divisions are a little different because uh, I've moved some planes around over the years and uh, so I find I don't have pre predefined or preset slots for each one. I just tend to use whatever's convenient now. Uh, larger plane or smaller block planes. So starting from the top, this is uh, 
a low angle uh, bar tap jack plane that I use a lot for uh, for uh, more uh, figured woods. That's uh, because it's low angle. It, it works better with um, wood that isn't straight grain. It's large, it has enough mass. You can use it as a small uh, jointer also. Very, very good plane. I'll just promote that as one of uh, an earlier plane, an earlier bird test I purchased. It's a uh, number six uh, four, called the Core 4 plane. And this, I used to use this as my main uh, jointer plane, but I've since uh, acquired a uh, Lee Nielsen number seven, and I, uh, rather than number eight, number seven. It's a, a real uh, jointer plane, so I uh, don't use this as much as a jointer plane, but it comes in handy. It's not as heavy as a number seven, uh, so you can use it as a super large smoother or a, a jointer plane. And the, uh, I just wanted to mention that the handles on these two planes I've just shown are Babinga. The Veritas used to use Babinga, and they've since moved to a Torrified Maple, so you can distinguish the uh, older uh, older generation Veritas planes from the Bobinga handles. Uh, moving along, this is a uh, number three that I use, uh, I replace the iron in, and uh, it's, uh, it's a good user plane, it's a smaller one. Planes are accumulated, small bonos plane, and uh, this is a uh, number, this is a uh, bronze plane uh, acquired. Many, uh, many years ago. Uh, it's quite a bit heavier than a standard iron plane and it has uh, these beautiful uh, cocoa bowl or uh, rosewood handles. Very similar to the uh, iron plane except for the added mass and uh, the bling factor of course. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a good plane. I tend to have quite a few uh, block planes, both uh, conventional uh, low angle and uh, the standard angle uh, batted at uh, 20 degrees block planes. I use these as small smoothers. Uh, the, this is a Lee Nielsen I have. I've got two of each along with the, uh, the skew block and uh, apron plane. And I actually might have three of one series. Uh, so I use this quite a bit as a small um, a smoother, a one-handed smoother. From my understanding, from going to Lee Nielsen's website, they don't seem to carry this 9.5 anymore, so I'm not sure. Maybe look for another manufacturer if you really want one. I think Veritas has it. And then uh, these are the uh, low angle variants that I use. This is uh, probably the newer one, judging from the, uh, the cap. It's not as worn as the other one. That's, uh, that's a beautiful plane for, uh, for edge work and uh, that sort of thing. And this is uh, another low angle, an earlier low angle of mine. And uh, my... Uh, my more user uh, nine and a half standard angle block plane, you could, judging from the cap. As much as I tried to polish these, once they've attained this patina, it's uh, it's a done deal. I mean, you just can't get that polish back. Well, I think it's something else. I tried polishing compounds and all sorts of things, so I'm not sure. Going uh, moving along, this is a, a transitional uh, coffin plane with a replace the sole on it, along with the mouth insert. It works, but it's, uh, it's not a go-to plane or anything. It's more of a conversation piece now. A uh, European style uh, smoother with a horn. And these don't work as well as a uh, metal body plane, this particular plane. It has a, a large mouth opening that I can't do much, much to uh, correct, aside from possibly inserting a, a, putting a mouth insert in. I mean, it works for probably for uh, soft woods as opposed to hard woods. A number four and a half Lee Nielsen is my go-to smoother. So this is, spends more time on the, on a workbench, my, one of my two workbenches than it does in the cabinet. But it's, it's a wider than a four. It's got a considerable mass. It's a bedrock style, so I can adjust the, uh, the mouth opening from, from without removing all the, all the components, the lever cap, the cap iron, and all that sort of thing. So it's, I've had this for a large number of years. <laughs> Probably my, my most used uh, hand plane. And you can see some of the paraffin wax streaks. I use, uh, I lubricate the soles with uh, sticks of paraffin wax, and that, that, that really uh, helps the plane to glide along better. Lately, I've been using uh, Vertas as a tool wax and a little tin, and I use that too. So I use both the paraffin and the tool wax. It makes a huge difference, but you have to keep applying it. So 
This is a, a small uh, or medium shoulder plane, a Vertas, and I use that a lot to uh, tune uh, uh, rabbits and uh, along edges of boards when they're not perfectly uh, at 90 degrees or not, not square. So this comes in handy, or actually to create rabbits. But, uh, to create rabbits today, I use uh, a, lot, uh, a skew uh, rabbiting plane. It's a Veritas, it's over in the other cabinet. To sort of become attached to that one, it's a little more versatile. More, uh, than, uh, so this is mostly to clean shoulders up. I use this for clean shoulders up. And that's, so that would be it. I've got some antique bevels at the top. So I'm very happy with, uh, with how this has turned out, these cabinets. And uh, I was concerned about the, uh, the construction. So I've, I've built them fairly lightly with lighter woods and the Baltic birch for dimensional stability and uh, strength. It's a half inch uh, sheet of Baltic birch at the interior. And they're three and a half inches deep, so they don't really affect my, uh, my work. Uh, my, my bench is right here in front of me. It's possibly three feet away. So I thought I was concerned that the depth of the uh, the depth would uh, would uh, interfere with uh, my work, but it's it's only three and a half inches additional to the original doors, so that worked out well. And of course the dry erase panels, these are uh, recycled from the original doors, and I use these to uh, make notes. Or